outrage today as former President Donald Trump is again pushing anti-Semitic tropes, this time with a cryptic comment about American Jews. In a post on his social media site, Mr. Trump said in part, quote, no president has done more for Israel than I have. And after lamenting about his lack of support from Jewish Americans, he added, U.S. Jews have to get their act together and appreciate what they've done in Israel before it's too late. Here with me now is Ashley Parker, senior national political correspondent at The Washington Post, and Jonathan Greenblatt, CEO and national director of the Anti-Defamation League. Welcome both. So, Ashley, Donald Trump is insisting that American Jews have dual loyalty and express similar sentiments throughout his presidency. Is that any indication, or is there any indication, as you should say, as to what provoked Sunday's post? It's unclear what pre precisely to me provoked Sunday's post, but there has been this sense, and this is not the first time that former President Trump has sort of leaned into this problematic anti-Semitic trope that uh, American Jews um, have sort of more loyalty to Israel than to the United States. Um, so, so this has been sort of a common problem uh, or a common controversy throughout his presidency. Uh, and in fact, even going back to some incidents that happened when he was running for the presidency as early as 2015. And Jonathan, before it's too late is extremely threatening. You've, you've called this post Jews blaming, insulting and disgusting. What makes this post so worrisome given the pattern of Trump's past remarks? Put it in context here. Well, it's a great question. I think we even have to pull the lens back a bit more. The context, Andrea, is these are dangerous comments at a dangerous time. We have Christian nationalists running for office all over the United States. We have a governor of Pennsylvania running against a Jewish candidate who regularly refers to him as elitist, different than all of us, et cetera. We have Kanye West, one of the most popular entertainers in the country, bemoaning Jewish Zionists and threatening to go death con three against the Jewish people, whatever that means. We have college campuses that have just reopened and radical anti-Zionists running amok with anti-Semitic graffiti all over. And then into this mess comes Donald Trump. And as Ashley said, he has you know, been invoking anti-Semitic tropes for years about Jewish power, about Jewish greed, about dual loyalty. And now he adds fuel to the fire at a time when Jews literally feel threatened because the threats are so high with this, you know, we called it, you called it cryptic in the opening, but let's just call it what it is, anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, and hateful, underline period. And Ashley, you know, in that Republican gubernatorial race, the candidate uh, Mastriano, Doug Mastriano in Pennsylvania, and initially hired from one of the most toxic anti-Semitic website, Gab, had hired the head of that website uh, as a campaign consultant until the Philadelphia Inquirer, you know, uh, Rachel Maddow, we on this show called him out on it. But he was paying this guy that runs the anti-Semitic website to bring followers into his campaign. Um, here's how his Democratic opponent, Josh Shapiro, reacted when I asked him about that on Friday. He has made clear um, that unless you think like him, unless you look like him, unless you worship like him, unless you marry like him, then you don't count in Doug Mastriano's Pennsylvania. He is extremely dangerous. And maybe he separated himself from that, from that website, but he's going out and criticizing Shapiro for sending his children to religious schools. Well... Again, as Jonathan said, I do think you have to pull the lens back here and start with a tone that is set from the top. And that would be the tone that former President Trump set uh, as early as when he was running for president. Um, not just, again, leaning into anti-Semitic tropes, uh, but but problematic racist tropes. Uh, and of course, you know, saying there's good people on both sides when it came to Charlottesville from not really uh, forcefully condemning uh, groups like white supremacist groups like the Proud Boys. And so all of this, it's, it's not just a dog whistle, it's far louder. And all of this emboldens this sort of behavior. It moves from the, the fringes where it's quite unacceptable and more into the mainstream. Again, when you have sort of the most high profile 
high-profile leader, not just of a party, but when he was president, leader of the country, enabling, condoning, winking and nodding at all of this behavior. It's not surprising that you would see it trickle down to, to the state level where someone would feel comfortable hiring someone who had worked for a website, as you just outlined. No, exactly. And Jonathan, as you mentioned, Trump supporter Kanye West is buying the conservative social network parlor now. So uh, Twitter had locked him out after he tweeted that he would soon go to, quote, DEFCON 3 on Jewish people, as you said. But West had 31.4 million Twitter followers. And you didn't see very much condemnation of this from Republicans. So what happens with him now going on buying another social network? Well, look, you didn't see much condemnation of this from Republicans from major celebrities. There's a handful of people, we could count them almost on one hand, from public life who stood up and spoke out, really not nearly enough. And so look, if Kanye wants to buy Parler, I say good luck to him. It has about a million monthly users, you know, 40,000 members. I mean, to call it small is an understatement, and it's not a haven for free speech, it's a haven for hate speech much like Gab that you mentioned before, or 4chan, or any of the others. It's just irrelevant to the conversation. But what is relevant is in a few days, we'll be remembering the fourth anniversary of the most violent anti-Semitic anti attack in American history, you know, the, the massacre in Pittsburgh. And in this moment, it shouldn't be too hard to ask former presidents to ask public figures, to ask people of faith and Americans, regardless of how they vote, to stand up and speak out against anti-Semitism. Whether it's, again, on these fringe websites, whether it's on a college campus, whether it's at the voting booth, it has no place in public life. Jonathan Greenblatt, Ashley Parker.